Okay, there we go. Good morning, everybody. My name is Peter Trotz, and I'm a research professor at Rotterdam University of Applied Sciences, but also a fab lab activist and researcher. Um, and I'm going to give a talk today that seems to be the odd one out again. But this time, I'm not talking society to tech people. I'm talking tech to uh, chemists, society people, um, which is kind of nice to do once for a change. Um, my talk is divided into three parts. First, a little bit uh, background. What, what makes me talk about this issue? Um, a short introduction into what is metadata, for those of you who are not familiar with that concept, and the proposal of FabML at the end. Um, in Fab Labs, we have a twofold challenge in sharing. First, sharing is put on the shoulders of individuals. Knowledge contributing to documentation, that's what individual users should do. And the second challenge is apparently this, this rapid growth of not only the number of Fab Labs, but of the whole uh, megasphere, as Bax has pointed out. Um, like seven years ago, it was easy to know everybody. Today, that's not possible anymore. Individual labs like uh, the one in Utrecht have started to tackle the challenge of documenting projects uh, in labs, so kind of supporting that individual responsibility uh, of, of Fab Lab users. But these uh, approaches are still kind of in silos. Um, they're shared through websites and often just uh, in, in, in the form of pictures and rarely in a kind of machine, proper machine-readable format, which is kind of you know what we wanted to, to have basically uh, these days, computers talking to computers. Um, the typical architecture of such kind of documentation of a fab lab project would be a title, would be an author, would include images, would include a description of the project, materials, processes, machines used, maybe settings, and uh, a number of attachments, design and production files. On top of that an anatomy of, of a fab project or fab moment, as they're quite often called, um, we would like to know about the provenance of such a project, where has it been done, and we want to know more about those attachments. Are these word files? Are these illustrator files? Are these um, whatever? Now, the way to make computers talk to computers typically is through metadata. And that's an existing field of, of research in computer science, really. Um, so there's a, a lot of stuff about it. Metadata is basically a vocabulary that allows you to describe something. Like here, you see the, the diversity in, in some uh, Finnish language for snow. Different types of, of snow have different words, so they do have a vocabulary to describe snow. Describing things has been done in libraries for, for ages, for centuries. And library scientists actually have also developed a specific set of metadata, which is so-called Dublin Core, which is the, the US Dublin, not the, the Irish one, I'm afraid. Um, so essentially, what, what we're trying to do with metadata is to um, sort of convert the, web, the website here, my, my site, at creating 010, um, which essentially says, this guy is Peter Troxley, and that's his image, and that's his project and turn that into a machine readable format, which would look like that. If we take a lot of time, probably more than 20 seconds for, for the slide, we could actually read it ourselves. But because it's machine readable, uh, computers can read that in a split second and understand um, what it tells us if there is some kind of agreement. That's the way we want to do it. And that's the, the, the fab ML. Uh, FAB metadata language proposal. Now, uh, this proposal consists of several parts. Certainly, I start with the vocabulary, and as always, don't reinvent the wheel. Dublin Core has a lot of elements in its vocabulary to describe stuff like the title, the author, the image, the description, language, relations, coverage, rights, 
on top of that, we would need some, some kind of more specific fab vocabulary. Now, I haven't really uh, done enough research into that, but I'm happy the people from VDI are here today, because they must know about PSL and STEP and all those standards that are used, actually, in manufacturing industry. Uh, in terms of attachments, which was a, a, another element of the fab moment, we do have ways to describe what type of files we do have uh, as attachments, like text, images, audio, video files, and specific application files like uh, CAD files, etc. Regarding the, the, the provenance, that's still kind of a, a shady feel. There are numerous new lists every uh, few years, three years, five years, a new uh, ultimate list of FabLab appears. Um, FabLabs do have URLs, so we kind of need to, to look into that. But we also need to look into the actual fabbing part. You know, the, the charter talks about we do have certain capabilities, but are the capabilities a laser cutter, which has then a type, a power rating is for, uh, of a different make, of a different type, or do we talk about laser cutting? So the future work uh, is probably twofold. One is I want to get into prototyping that stuff again, try it out with a few laps around the globe and see where do we go. And we need to discuss those standards, and that vocabulary that we sort of agree upon to make our stuff machine readable. Thank you.